Good morning, live from West Harvard Center. I'm Jake Ushinowskis coming to you live from West Harvard Town Hall. Today, I just wanted to give you the inside scoop uh, on Inside the Huddle with some crucial sports topics to debate, starting off with Jordan McNair from University of Maryland. He unfortunately passed away a couple months ago and the scandal has come to light uh, because of recent allegations of abuse from the University of Maryland and they're being investigated currently. The head coach has been put on leave. So right now there's been a lot of scrutiny within the Maryland football program about how they've treated or lack thereof their players and basically with verbal abuse, physical abuse with forcing them to do things out of their comfort zone that are basically viewed as unethical. So the parents have already filed a civil suit against McNair, against the school, and the school has been heavily scrutinized for not being on top of this from the beginning because this apparently has gone on months and months before the death of McNair occurred. And it really raises the question why nothing was done from any of the players to any of the coaches because on a football team there's 50 players and dozens of assistant coaches so obviously someone was witnessing during this time of what was transpiring so it really makes you wonder was everyone too scared to speak up or did everyone think it was part of the football masculinity to tolerate this type of behavior? And I think it really raises the question of, can football make us be blindsided by such actions? Because if such actions were done on a baseball field by a head coach or a basketball court, then it would be viewed differently than football. But because football is viewed with such a masculinity and such a high tolerance of pain, it almost makes it an afterthought when unethical behaviors are uh, condoned. So I really think that this should make uh, waves across the country, not just for Maryland, but for programs, for NFL teams that, look, at the end of the day, we're all human, we're not robotic, you can be broken down as a person by being treated so poorly to the point of uh, being killed on the field because of a heat stroke like McNair was. And it's a really sad story, but I think there can be something taken away from it in the sense that if nothing was seen before, hopefully something can be seen now so players aren't having to be put up with the certain type of abuse that McNair was enduring. On a lighter note, uh, I do want to get up to speed with the baseball playoffs coming up. Uh, the Yankees and Red Sox are dueling it out, and I think it's a great race because you have two of the bigger markets in baseball who were going toe-to-toe -to -toe up in the ALE standings until the Red Sox pulled away with a four-game sweep about a week and a half ago. Right now, the Yankees are treading water until Aaron Judge gets back with his chip fracture in his wrist. However, the fact is that just because they're the wild card team and the Red Sox are currently 10 games up in the standings doesn't mean that all is lost for hope. As we saw a year ago, the Yankees were able to take the wild card route all the way to one win away from the World Series. So although it makes it more difficult for the Yankees to achieve their goal, it certainly doesn't make it impossible. And just look at the Red Sox who are on pace for 115 wins. They currently do have the best record in baseball by a fair margin. But the point is that once October comes, the slates wipe clean for good or bad. As long as you get in the tournament, that's all any team can ask for because really up until that point, it doesn't have any impact going forward. You know, the Dodgers had the best record in baseball a year ago until they went on a horrendous stretch where they lost 16 of 17 games in September. And basically, it affected them going forward because they didn't end up winning the World Series. So 
Although the Red Sox have played five great months of baseball, by far better than anyone has seen in recent memory. It can all be wiped away with a not so great month of October, which is completely possible because the pressure is ramped up. Certain players who haven't done well in October, like Chris Sale, David Price, they're gonna be counted upon to raise the bar. And quite frankly, the pressure is on the Red Sox like no other team in baseball. And that's something where if they don't win the World Series, you have to seriously wonder, okay, if it's not this year, then what are they doing wrong? Because they seem to have answered every possible question that has been thrown their way thus far, but that all goes for not if they don't raise the uh, World Series trophy come late October. So I think as great as they've been, baseball is the one sport where more times than not, the best team does not win it all. And that's something that I'm sure the Red Sox are taking it in with much pleasure of all the success they've had this season. But it certainly does humble you, like baseball has a tendency of doing, to not allow you to get too far ahead and think that you're invincible. <clears throat> As for the Yankees, although Aaron Judge has been out and Gary Sanchez, which is another significant blow, they have had some not unsung heroes, but players that have raised their expectations and performance tremendously since those two have been sidelined with injuries. You have Miguel Anduar, who's been hitting 285 in the 17 games Judge has missed with immense power that he's displayed day in, day out. John Carlos Stan has really earned his pinstripes in the coming days and weeks with big performances carrying the team like he did a year ago with the Marlins. So. You have those guys who, although the lineup would be that much more potent with Judge, they've raised it to another level where you feel when Aaron Judge does come back, you'll have a lineup that rivals any in the game. Because although Andujar and Stan were great before, they've just almost made it to where you add Judge to that lineup and there's really four to five hitters that would be in any top of the lineup in baseball, whether it's the Astros, the Red Sox. So it does certainly make you wonder how pitchers are gonna be able to pitch to them if Andujar, Stan, Gregorius, Hicks can keep it up. And I really think this will make them a better team going forward because they faced adversity, they were able to overcome it, weather the storm, and it'll make them that much stronger, having the confidence that they were able to succeed to a certain level without judge, something that I'm not sure many people, including themselves, may have thought beforehand. So now that we've addressed the Yankees and Red Sox, as far as the MLB landscape as a whole goes, you look at the AL playoff previews with the Indians, Astros, Athletics, Mariners. I know a lot of people have been talking about the tanking in baseball, and that's certainly been a sore subject. No one ever wants to talk about losing. It's not a sexy topic at all. But the good news is there's only 40 games roughly to go. And then you'll not have to worry about tanking for quite a while because you have all the best teams playing. Obviously, in the playoffs, there's no reason to worry about tanking when it comes to the best of the best trying to win the World Series. So honestly, I look at it from both leagues that Anyone has a fair chance of winning the World Series from the Yankees to the Red Sox. This is pending everyone's healthy, uh, which is a, not a foregone conclusion, but as you expect Judge to get back, Sanchez to come back, the Astros will get healthy and the Red Sox are healthy as it is. The Athletics have as deep of a bullpen as there is in baseball. Personally, I'd say they have the best bullpen, topped off with a solid rotation and a very potent lineup that can hit the ball out of any ballpark as they're doing it in one of the more pitcher friendly ballparks in Oakland. So I, if I'm any team, you always hear, well, you wouldn't want to play this team come October, but I think that goes for every team in baseball. You can make the case. You wouldn't want to play the athletics. You wouldn't want to play the Mariners. There's truly no easy out. I remember talking, to some people a few weeks ago and I was saying, oh, well, 
if the Athletics are in the wild card, I'd like to play them. Considering they've won 38 of their last 50 ball games, I don't think anyone can say that about them now. So it's really looking like the best teams will truly be in it. There's not a weak link like last year's Minnesota Twins team that barely snuck in and didn't have the firepower to really orchestrate a World Series run. So I definitely believe that whether it's the Athletics, who are a truly good feel, feel good story because no one had them even competing within the next two years to see how they've really transformed and blossomed two years early and are rivaling the Astros for the division, bragging rights, and being able to avoid that wild card game is certainly unprecedented because I don't think anyone had the Astros as a second place finisher in the division. They had, everyone had the Astros as the team that the World Series would have to go through. So that certainly shakes up the playoff picture if Oakland is able to take the division reins from them. Going over to the NL, you have certainly a plethora of great teams. You have the Cubs, the Braves, the Phillies, the Dodgers, who are seven games over 500. And being nearly seven games over 500, it doesn't strike you as anything successful thus far. But that's certainly not a team that anyone would want to face clicking on all cylinders. You have Manny Machado, Brian Dozier, who can certainly light up the ballpark in big moments, Cody Bellinger, Justin Turner. So the list goes on and on as to why you wouldn't want to play them. <clears throat> Currently, they don't have their closer, Kenley Jansen, but they're supposed to get him back within the next month or so. And that brings us to the point, if they can make the playoffs with Jansen and they could just survive, stay around the division race until they get him back and then squeak in. They'll certainly be plenty to deal with. And then as far as the Cubs go, they won the World Series two years ago. The Brewers aren't anything to be forgotten about. They certainly can show a team on any given day why they're uh, the team to be in the NL Central, only two games behind the Cubs currently after yesterday's seven nothing win in Wrigley Field. So you look at the Cubs, Brewers, even the Cardinals are coming on very strongly. Uh, the NL is very interesting in a weird way this year because a lot of the teams that were expected to be great haven't been great, and a lot of the teams that were expected to not be contenders this year have been great. So the roles have kind of flipped. You look at each division, the Braves weren't expected to be good this year. They're looking like they might be on the verge of running away with the division with the Phillies floating around 500 the last 10 games or so, and the Braves have really taken off. So the Braves could be a year early in the process. You look at the Diamondbacks, who have been good the last few years, but no one really took them seriously as a threat to beat the Dodgers. And then the Rockies, who are currently second in the division, they've leapfrogged the Dodgers too. So the Dodgers currently at third place are in a frightening position because with that payroll, Acquiring Machado, who many people thought negated the loss of Corey Seager going down with Tommy John surgery, it makes you wonder what's wrong with the team currently. I know they can be a force in the playoffs, but that lineup was just too good to have two total runs in the last two games against the Giants. I know the Giants threw Mass and Bumgarner uh, two days ago, but still, that ballpark, that team at home should be able to beat the Giants, who are a 500 team at best. They're not going anywhere this year. And the games are simply more important to the Dodgers season. So it's certainly worrisome that ever since their 10-game road trip, in which they went 7-3 and three in after the All-Star break, they've basically taken a step back. I know losing Jansen was certainly a big blow to their playoff chances and their team's success, but they're one of the better teams on paper in baseball, not just their division, not just in the National League. So Dave Roberts certainly has the pressure of reeling this team back in, getting their sights set, and quite frankly, playing up to their expectations. Because when you have one of the highest payrolls in baseball and the biggest markets, being seven games over 500, 
is certainly not something you would expect given the successful trade deadline they had, adding John, at John Axford from the Toronto Blue Jays as bullpen depth, Brian Dozier, a proven former all-star second baseman, and Manny Machado, who is a MVP candidate at any point in time. So I certainly believe that with that being said, it quite frankly is up for grabs. You can pick any World Series matchup. It could be the A's Dodgers. It could be Yankees Braves. It wouldn't surprise me. It could be Red Sox Cubs. Uh, it's something that baseball rarely sees because most years, I think last year, people could have picked Astros, Dodgers, and they wouldn't have been that surprised. The Astros look dominant with their pitching staff and their one-two punch in Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve. So it truly makes you wonder, is it going to be a World Series matchup that no one saw coming, even in a race this close between all the teams in it? Uh, it'll truly be something to keep an eye on, and hopefully there's just competitive close games between all the teams because that would make for one heck of a playoff run from beginning of October to the end. And lastly, I did want to touch up on the NFL season preview because there's a lot of great storylines going on in the league. I know a lot of it's been ignored by the kneeling talk and the political involvement within the NFL. However, you look at the AFC, the NFC, it's very similar to how baseball is going with variety of great teams, not just teams that can be good, but I think win a Super Bowl. In the AFC, you have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are Super Bowl contenders as usual. The New England Patriots, coming from a Patriot fan myself, I don't look at them as as much of a Super Bowl contender as in years past. I think that their defense is highly suspect. It didn't get much better from last year. I think the offense has taken a step back. I'm expecting a decline in performance by Tom Brady. He's already dealing with a sore back. Uh, I really question how the offense will be able to fill in for the defensive issues they have by making the team better than the defense allows it. I think that with the Patriots, they're going to have so much pressure offensively. I don't know if they're going to be able to rise to the task and basically negate the lack of explosion that the defense will provide. So I look at the Texans as a Super Bowl contender, barring health. I know they were devastated with injuries last year. J.J. Watt, Deshaun Watson, a lot of their core players, which can happen to any team, but if they're healthy, they certainly have a puncher's chance at making a deep playoff run. So you look at it, in the NFC too, the Philadelphia Eagles are clearly the best team in football, not just because they won the Super Bowl last year, but because of the team they're bringing back. They were, they were able to retain a lot of key members of that team. And with the Eagles, you have Carson Wentz, who's coming back. They were able to win the Super Bowl without him. It's not like they were just able to win it with him last year. They were able to overcome the loss of, at the time, the MVP of the National Football League. He was going to win it prior to his injury. He had the numbers. He had the team. And he had the storyline of being a second-year quarterback who was playing lights out at the time. So as far as the NFC East, you have the Dallas Cowboys who are looking to come back after a dismal year where they had sophomore slumps with Ezekiel Elliott being suspended, Dak Prescott taking a step back in his rise as a potential star. You have the New York Giants drafting Saquon Barkley, uh, trying to preserve the last years of Eli Manning's career and make one last hurrah of a Super Bowl run. You have in the NFC North, the Green Bay Packers trying to salvage the last few years of Aaron Rodgers' career. So certainly, without a doubt, there's a lot of great quarterbacks at the top, the cream of the crop, basically trying to make one last run at the twilight of their career, whether it's Brady, Roethlisberger, Rivers, uh, Manning. So you have all these players who are kind of at the same juncture of their career, all going for that same goal. 
and it'll be interesting to see if any of them are able to come out on top because you also have a lot of young quarterbacks, Dak Prescott, Blake Bortles, who I know he isn't great, but the Jaguars, I think, are primed to make a playoff run. And if Bortles can play like he did anywhere close to when he faced the Pittsburgh Steelers or New England Patriots, I think they have a more than a punch's chance at making the Super Bowl. They should have beaten the New England Patriots last year in the AFC Championship game if it weren't for some questionable calls and play calling. So it's really a wide open race, and this is what you love about sports. It's now when the Golden State Warriors are able to just plow through the field and win the NBA Finals like everyone expected. It's when, if the best team wins, if that's the New England Patriots and that or that were the Philadelphia Eagles, then that's great. But when it's so expected by everyone watching, it's not nearly as sweet because there, there wasn't an element of surprise. And that's why we watch sports, to be surprised, to be delighted. And it's not as delightful if you can call something happening a million miles away. So that should certainly be fun. And I think my... Final take on everything that's ha been happening the last few weeks in sports with the NFL kneeling is basically I'm for the perspective that everyone should be allowed to do what best suits them. If that's taking a knee, I think that they should be able to take a knee. It's not anyone's decision to for someone to believe in a certain belief. It's just not. And if people want to kneel and do what they believe is best for them, they should be allowed because that's what democracy is. And that's what makes America great. If everyone were forced to believe a certain way, it would be stupid because we're all on this earth to strive for what we think is right. And by taking that away, you're basically forcing feelings on someone that's not in their mind and that should never happen. So without further ado, this is Jake Yushnowskis from West Hartford Center and I thank you for watching Inside the Huddle.